Good afternoon, guys, and we are back here on The Angry Astronaut, and uh, you may have recalled in a previous video, I did a, uh, a small piece that I learned about at Spacecom uh, here in the UK about a single-stage takeoff vehicle, and we are joined today by, I believe, the CEO of the company, uh, definitely the guy to talk to about this vehicle. Could you please introduce yourself, sir, to the viewers? Oh, my name is Pradeep Das, and I'm president and CTO of Space Engine Systems. Thank you very much for joining us. So we'll get right down to it. Um, can you please uh, tell us, I mean, SSTOs have kind of been the holy grail of space flight for a very long period of time. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about how yours is going to succeed when so many others have failed? Um, I don't want to exactly say that it's SSTO because what we're planning to do is go up to suborbital in the vehicle that we have and then release a transfer vehicle to LEO and to the lunar mission. The whole company is set up for the lunar mission with everything else we're doing in hypersonic and suborbital and LEO is to get us there and to bring in cash flow way ahead of time. But the company is set up for the lunar mission. And so basically it's 100% reusable. Uh, we got the Hello 1X, uh, which is a demonstrator vehicle, and the Hello 1 and the Hello 2. The demonstrator vehicle will only go up to about 32 kilometers in altitude, and it's to test uh, the air breathing engines. It's a turbo ramjet. It's also called a DAS GNX engine, and then it'll come back and land. And uh, so while we are that vehicle is almost ready, and uh, we're already building the Hello 1, which is a commercial vehicle, which will go up to suborbital uh, just past 100 kilometers, and then it will release a transfer vehicle of about 550 kilograms of usable payload, meaning that we could take customers' payload weighing 550 kilograms uh, to approximately 550 kilometers in altitude. And that's our whole uh, plan for the Hello 1, and both are scheduled for 2023 that is next year but again uh, what we do and the regulatory approvals are totally different so uh, timings could change uh, we, we're trying to get this done in the u.s and we we, we think uh, our best chances are in the u.s uh, to get approval to fly next year so um, you have some relationship that you've established with the Cornwall Space Cluster. Um, has that gone anywhere? Yes, uh, we have taken up a building in Cornwall. Uh, we have a joint um, collaboration with Cornwall Council, uh, and it's at the New Key Airport. We are setting up uh, at Cornwall uh, as we speak right now, and uh, we're also in discussions with uh, the CAA and Department of Transport in the UK to explore options to fly uh, from the Hello One from the UK. But it's very early stage. We don't know where to land up. But we have expressed our interest to fly in 2023. Okay, so right now you're feeling the most optimistic about a flight from the United States. Uh, any ideas to where from? Uh, it's most likely from Mojave is what we think. Um, but we're just putting together a whole package to submit to FAA and work closely with them. And uh, every stage of the way. What is the first um, uh, ship that you're going to be sending up then? You have two test articles going up in 2023. What's the first of them again? Oh, uh, that is the Hello One X, X Mini Experimental. And all that will do is it'll take us to 32 kilometers altitude and then come back and land. It does not have a rocket engine. It's got only air breathing engine in that vehicle. So that is the same vehicle we could use for point to point for any applications. So it's not, a, what it does is it proves that the air breathing engine works perfectly well up to 32 kilometers. It can glide back um, and land. Uh, so all the vehicles we use are 100% reusable. This is, um, the, but is it a hybrid engine? In other words, so it, it starts off air breathing, at least for your first test article, but the ultimate objective is a hybrid engine of some kind to drive you to low Earth orbit? Yes, um, basically um, the Hello 1 would have a rocket engine uh, uh, which will trigger a 32 kilometers altitude and take us to uh, suborbital. And then that vehicle would basically come back, but it will release a 550 kilograms 
uh, satellite, uh, up to 550 kilograms in usable uh, payload. And we're already taking orders uh, for the 550 kilograms payload, um, assuming that everything works out well. But there's always a, a possibility of failure somewhere. So we, we're trying to mitigate everything we can. And when it transitions from um, transitions uh, from uh, air breathing engine to a rocket engine, what sort of fuel does the uh, rocket run off of? Um, the, the even the air uh, that is something I should probably explain. The uh, there are two air breathing engines. Uh, one is a turbojet, ter, uh, jet, and the other one is a ramjet. And the uh, the turbojet uses jet air fuel just like any other plane you see flying around. And uh, the uh, ramjet uses hydrogen as the fuel. And uh, as far as the uh, rocket engine is concerned, you could use hydrogen or methane. And uh, we are more prone to using methane at this time. So you, you may go the methane route. That's a, a lot of a lot of folks are, are definitely doing that. Um, so, I mean, you know, these sorts of, uh, of solutions, yours may be, you know, different, uh, you know, from others, but nevertheless, um, you know, they have been attempted in the past. There's, there's, you know, a number of, of companies that have explored it, funding drying up, that sort of thing. But you are, are looking at, at uh, a successful test as early as next year. Um, can you give me some insight as to how your company has managed to accomplish this, a small ca- company out of Canada? Our um, head office is in Canada. Uh, we are funded by uh, internally. Uh, we have not gone to Series A funding or Series B funding or any of those things. Um, well, I've put in a, a lot of money into this, a lot of time into this, and uh, there are some uh, very close private investors. Uh, we are a very low profile company, at least until now, uh, but now that we need support from either the U.S. government or Canadian government or U.K. government to show that the importance of space uh, and hypersonic flight. So that is why we are going public and talking to people and one of the reasons why we're talking to you too. So you have stayed away from press releases and others for what, in the last two years. Uh, we just started that in the last two years, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm very happy that uh, you've decided to uh, t- to give me some time. Then that being the case, if you've only just started this process, so um, let's talk about your long term ambitions. Then I mean, it sounds like you have some pretty lofty ones. You mentioned a lunar mission. Can you explain that to me, please? Um, one of the things that when we started the company in 2011, uh, the focus has always been the lunar mission. Uh, how to get to the moon. I like to use the word lunar instead of using the word moon. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's Earth's moon. So um, uh, what we want to do is land on the moon or be in orbit around the moon uh, first. So we, in our plan, we could, on the, um, on the Hello 2, um, we could release up to about 76 kilograms or slightly more than that. Um, landing on the moon and probably uh, almost three times that weight and mass in orbit around the moon. So that has always been our focus and um, all the money we spend on it is uh, with that as the aim. But for, fortunately there are a lot of other markets like hypersonic market, neural market, satellite market. And why should we believe that? We thought we would tap into those and uh, try to bring in more cash flow. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we are focused on hypersonic and other areas, um, basically to bring in cash flow. But our ultimate focus is um, get to the moon uh, and also human to space in 2025. And um, we already sent tickets on our website for 2025 uh, flight. But again, uh, the timelines could change if we screw up anywhere in between. Now, 2025 to the moon, and what's what kind of cargo do you have in mind to, to carry to the moon? Uh, sorry, uh, 2025 is basically uh, human uh, to space, to Leo. And uh, cargo will be, uh, depending on the customer who wants to go there, we're basically a, a trucking company to space or to the moon. Um, 
that, that is the best way to say it. So we don't have a product. We just take whatever you have. We're just a trucking company to space with no wheels. That's extremely ambitious, 2025, um, to, to, I mean, not just to orbit, to, for, for a human-rated spacecraft. Um, is, since that's been in your mind, since uh, having a human-rated uh, space plane or whatever you want to call it has been in your mind, how are you progressing with life support, those sorts of issues that can be quite challenging? Um, if I answer the, that specific question, all of vehicles right now, uh, piloted vehicles with unmanned options, including the Hello 1X. The Hello 1X, the uh, Hello 1 and the Hello 2 are all piloted uh, with an option to um, go unmanned. As far as space boots, uh, space suits and uh, items like that, we are working on it ourselves. We set up another company called Umani Corporation and then we are trying to work on it, but we may just go and buy from someone else to approve on it. But we are still working on it ourselves under this company called Umini Corporation. Uh, the, one of the uh, one of the main focus of that is to make EMU and uh, extra vehicular mobility unit, and that is one of the things that we're working on. That, but it's very early stage at this point of time. We're putting all the resources into flight at this time, but we could always collaborate with someone else for space suits. Well, that is indeed very surprising so i mean and uh, and exciting certainly so i mean if you're going to achieve a human rated spacecraft let's let's say you know you achieve your dreams and you, you do have a human rated spacecraft that quickly i mean do you foresee you know becoming not only a part of the artemis program but i mean could you theoretically deliver humans to the lunar gateway for example those sorts of things um, the very fact that we are moving to the U.S. Um, and, and going to put in a lot of resources in the U.S. is to get major contracts in the U.S., either for defense or for space. Um, and one of the things that we realized that we, we have to have uh, probably uh, controlling shares in the U.S. Uh, with U.S. entities or U.S. Uh, individuals uh, to to expand in the U.S. So that is one of the reasons we set up a company called Space Engine Systems USA Inc., which is a hundred percent U.S. company, and uh, and we are trying to establish in the U.S. and potentially get major contracts. I don't know anything about Artemis at this point of time, other than reading in the uh, uh, public domain. But we are always open to any opportunity that we can work with the U.S., uh, especially NASA and Space Force. Now, on the other side of the Atlantic, where I currently am right now, there is a lot of talk in, amongst ESA members in terms of finally making Europe its own human rate, get it, getting its own human rated space flight program. Now, anything that they would start from scratch right now would probably take at least a decade to develop. If, if this is successful, could you for, would you foresee uh, your, your uh, he, hello being a part of, of their human rated program as well? Yeah, I mean, that's another reason why we set up a company in the UK called Space Engine System Limited, which is 100% US, UK entity. And UK is actually, um, we have also applied for expression of interest uh, to any launch that uh, the UK Space Agency wants to buy launches. And I believe there is a program in place at this time. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have applied for it as expression of interest. And we, we're looking at all opportunities, uh, definitely in the UK too. And uh, we've not talked to ESA or anyone else in Europe, but we participated at the uh, Riven uh, Space Conference in Germany and uh, met several people. Uh, there's a lot of potential, but uh, we have nothing concrete at this point in time. What is the maximum payload of the Hello 2? It's 5,500 kilograms uh, to Leo at, at about 550 um, kilometers. So 5,500 kilograms, 5.5 tons. And these are actually usable payload. I'm not talking about any other fuel or engines or others that take you up all the way to 550 uh, kilometers altitude is actual, actual payload that a customer could give us. So similar to Crew Dragon, similar to Dream Chaser and all that, but at the same time, without requiring a rocket to get it there. I mean, that's essentially what you're saying, right? Yeah, basically there is a rocket engine. 
but there's no rocket. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, if you look at uh, Falcon 9 or any other rocket company that is sending uh, payloads to space, when they say that they bring back the first stage, and I, I don't specify the company, but uh, which other company you want to pick, if they talk of bringing the first stage back uh, and land back. What they're doing is they've taken oxygen, they've taken fuel, all the way up, they've slowed it down and brought it back. For us, we just fly back, uh, and it's uh, basically we glide back, and it's free. And uh, one of the things is we take oxygen from the air up to about 32 kilometers. The, the reason why we are not focused on scramjets is because scramjets are not ready yet. And that's why we're just focusing on uh, turbo ramjet, which is, um, and that is why we're going to trigger the rocket engine at 32 kilometers. Instead of 70 kilometers, if you use scramjet, but uh, as far as we are concerned, the scramjet, our scramjet is not ready yet. It's probably a few years away before that is ready. So we just want to fly. So the, the fastest way we can fly is to use a rocket engine at 32 kilometers and then uh, go to suborbital and then release a transfer vehicle. Uh, that goes for Hello 1 and Hello 2. This is all very exciting. I mean, certainly the prospects of this. When do, when do you, I mean, assume, let's say you get the thumbs up. Let's say that, you know, a uh, an airfield or something in the United States gives you permission. The FAA gives you permission, that sort of thing. When will you be ready to send your first test article up? Um, the Hello One X is ready as, it will be ready as of February uh, next year to fly. But the whole way we're just picking up the avionics at this point in time. Uh, so we have our own simulator, and uh, we have two supersonic pilots uh, uh, in the U.S. standing by and supporting us uh, at this point of time with our simulator design. Uh, so they'll be running the simulators. Because, like I've mentioned to you, these are piloted vehicles with an unmanned option. Well, all of this is very exciting. Um, I'm, I'm certainly a supporter of anything extremely innovative in space flight, and this is certainly one of the most innovative I, things I've heard about for quite some time. Is there anything else you'd like the viewers to know about uh, your company, your products, um, something you'd like to convey? Uh, all I want is uh, I want the U.S. support. I want the U.S. government support, and uh, definitely, of course, the Canadian government support, too. Um, as our focus is mainly in the U.S. because we think that that's the fastest way to flight um, because we offer hypersonic um, and what we believe is in testing in flight. I'm not saying that we've proven everything, but there's certain things we have to learn when we fly. The faster we get regulatory approval, the faster we can fly. And uh, we hope FAA and other U.S. Uh, regulatory bodies would support us uh, to fly as fast as possible. And as far as Canada is concerned, we, uh, head office still remains in Canada. Um, we're expanding to a certain extent in Canada, but we are definitely putting in a lot of resources in the U.S. and U.K. at this time. All very exciting, sir. Well, once again, I deeply appreciate you uh, giving us your time today, and I wish you all the success in the world, and I'll be keeping a close eye on what you're doing. Thank you very much, Johnny. Thank you.